Welcome to the One Star Weak Foot Show, your one stop shop for player reviews, starring your host, One Star Weak Foot, and our review specialist, One Star Weak Foot. Good evening and welcome to the One Star Weak Foot Show, your one stop shop for player reviews. I'm going to be your host today, One Star Weak Foot, and it makes me feel so great to see you guys back on the channel. Today, we're going to review this 90 rated middle icon Stoichkov card. And if you guys are day ones of this channel, if you guys subscribed to me since last year, you guys already know that I packed this guy in the middle icon SBC. I believe it was last spring. And um, last year I did use him for a few weekend leagues. And the main issue I had with him was that even though he was a very solid card, by the time I got him on the game with the power creep that happened last year, he just wasn't a top tier player anymore so he only lasted a weekend league or two the main issue i had with him was just really he didn't feel too good on the ball he felt kind of clunky he felt kind of heavy so we're gonna see how he plays this year all right so let's look at his car a little bit closer he's five foot ten he has medium medium work rates he's left footed he has a three star weak foot but four star skill moves i played actually four games um it says five games here but when i was playing these games i bumped into a uh, relegator so that guy backed out of the game immediately so i only played four games and i got four goals with him so which is not a bad contribution and part of what really inspired me to make this review was one of my subscribers commented in one of my past videos and was telling me yo you gotta check out this left wing storage cough card he's a beast so is he a beast we're about to find out but before we go any further, if you're enjoying the content, please hit me with a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I appreciate all you guys once again for watching. So, oh, that's Cliver. This is Storage Cop. Um, let's look at this card a little bit closer. Um, when you look at this card, he has a lot of the ingredients to be a very meta card on this game. So, first he has the pace. Um, 90 pace is very, very good. He has 91 acceleration, 90 sprint speed. Very well rounded pace stats right there. His shooting stats are very good as well. He has 90 attack positioning, which is a very important stat um, for any attacker. He has 92 finishing, which is putting him in that elite category of finishing. And his shot power 88 is very good as well. He has 87 long shots, 89 volleys. I mean, all around, his shooting stats are mental. His passing stats are also not too shabby. I mean, it's not very often you'll find a card with a pace, with the shooting, and on top of that, the passing stats that he does possess. His dribbling stats are very good as well. So I'm not sure exactly why he felt kind of heavy, kind of clunky to me last year. But, I mean, his dribbling stats are very good. He has the agility. He has the ball control, the dribbling, even the composure and reactions are very, very good. And his physical stats are part of what makes his card so attractive. I mean, he has 81 strength. He has very good dribbling, very good passing, shooting, pace. He looks like the total package. Is he a beast though? We're about to find out. Let's jump into the gameplay. I'm going to take you guys over to the review specialist in the studios. One Star Weak Foot. Take it away. Thanks, One Star. So, thanks to you guys at home. Thanks to all your views and subscriptions. We now finally were able to afford a microphone on the One Star Weak Foot show. So, big ups to you guys at home. But, the main question of this episode remains... Is this card worth 700,000 coins? And the answer, in my opinion, is yes. We're going to break down the stats so you know exactly what to expect. So, how does 90 pace feel in game? Does it put him in the top tier as far as pace goes? I would say he falls slightly short, but he's still very, very good and better than most cards on this game. He definitely has enough acceleration to get in behind the defense. He definitely has a lot of acceleration coming out of certain skill moves. And it's a, a really, really good thing to have on this card. Where I say he falls short is that he doesn't feel quite as quick as somebody like an Mbappe, like an Adam Matraore, but he's just below that uh, tier, and I think he's definitely good enough to play any attacking position you might envision him playing, so therefore I gotta give his pace an 8.5 to 9 out of 10. Next we're gonna talk about shooting, because the main con of this card really would be the 3 star weak foot, right? Does it affect his shooting? Does he have top tier shooting? Is he good enough to play the striker position? And I would say, yes, he's definitely good enough to play a striker position. First, we're gonna talk about his attack positioning, all right? Because another con that you may think about when you're thinking about this card is his medium, medium work rates. And I will admit that at times, he felt a little bit lazy when it comes to making runs going forward. I had to make a lot of 
I have to press the L1 button a lot of times to get him to make those forward runs. I mean, part of that is just because of the delayed gameplay I was using him in. But um, he does need some urging forward, if you know what I mean, when it comes to pushing forward. However, when you're in and around the box, and if you play slowly, this guy will be always in good positions, always in dangerous positions in order to score the ball. And when he's in the box, this guy's finish is another level. This guy's finishing even on his weak foot. I did score on his weak foot um, one time, and I did get a few dangerous shots off with his weak foot. So that just tells me enough. That tells me that if you get this guy in the box, left foot, right foot, it doesn't matter. He's going to score. And he has an 88 shot power. So not only is the shot accurate, it's going to be a bullet. It's going to beat the keeper nine times out of 10. I really, really enjoyed this guy's shot. And it really surprised me because last year, I didn't find him to be as clinical as he was this year. I mean, maybe it's because this year I'm trying him earlier in the game cycle. But whatever the case is, this guy's shot is very, very good. I did try to few, pop a few long shots with him. I didn't score any, but with 87 long shots, 88 shot power, I don't anticipate that to be an issue at all. Overall, I gotta give his shooting a 9 out of 10. This guy's clinical as you can get, even with a weak foot. Next, we're gonna talk about his passing, all right? 87 passing. Is it good enough to play the can position? I would say yes. I mean, this guy is very reliable in all aspects of passing. He has the finesse to make the short passes around the box. He has the vision to make the long passes, to ping those through balls, to make those incisive through balls. Um, is he good enough to play the can position? I would say yes. Um, but he's not going to be a De Bruyne. Um, he's not going to be quite at that level of making those those defense killing through balls. But he is capable of popping a few of those um, here and there. He's just not going to be as consistent as somebody like De Bruyne at popping those passes. Once again, I don't find that his three-star weak foot really hinders him in any way as far as his passing goes. And overall, I got to give his passing an 8 out of 10. Next, we're going to talk about this car's dribbling. Because like I said, this guy felt clunky last year. How do you feel this year? And wow, I was actually surprised by this guy's dribbling because in FIFA 20, in comparison to FIFA 19, you do need a lot of agility. You do need to be able to shift your body weight to make those quick, responsive turns. And this guy feels very responsive on the ball. He's actually one of the better dribblers I've used on this game. Um, as far as shifting his body weight, as far as turning quickly, He's just a step below the Neymars, the Insignes, the Mertens of the world. I don't expect him to turn as quickly because number one, he's a little bit taller than them. And number two, he's stockier than them. He's bigger than them. So he's just not, no matter what his agility stats are going to say, he's just not going to turn as quick as them. However, that being said, he's still very quick to turn. He feels very responsive on the ball in his own right. His reactions to 88, his composure 89 are of course going to be very good. The one thing that I got to mention about this card that makes his dribbling feel so, so good in game. It's just ball control and dribbling, all right? His ball control is 89. His dribbling is 91. And in game, this guy has the capability to just stop on a dime, turn, and shoot. The way that this guy is able to control the ball in those tight areas where he's able to just shift and get a shot off, shift, create a half chance is really what makes him a really, really good dribbler. He keeps the ball so, so close to his body. And in tight areas, even though he's kind of stocky and you would think it's easier to dispossess him, He's actually very hard to dispossess. So overall, I give his dribbling a 9 out of 10. He's just a step below the, the Neymars, the Insignes, but he's still a very, very good dribbler. And he will surprise you with how he's able to retain possession. Finally, we got to talk about this card's physical. How does it feel in game? And honestly, his 81 strength, his 93 aggression are very unique. All right, most of the time you got an attacker and he has high strength, but his aggression is not that good. Or he has high aggression, but his strength's not very good. But this guy with his stocky body type, with a 81 strength, with a 93 aggression is very, very hard to get off the ball. So with this card, you end up with a guy who can dribble, who can also shield the ball, who can also ride the challenge, who can also win things in the air with his 78 jumping. I mean, this guy is actually the total package. And in my opinion, you got to play him in the striker position. Overall, his physical, I got to give it 8.5 out of 10. He doesn't really have any major weaknesses in this area either. All right, so finally, 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 we're here at the end of the episode. We're here at the end of the review. What do I think about this card? I think this card's actually one of the best attackers I've used in this price range because what separates him from a lot of attackers on this game is that he's pretty much very good at everything in the game. He has a clinical finish. He's very good at passing. He's able to dribble. He's able to keep possession in tight areas. He's able to shield. He's able to win headers and he has pace to boot. I mean, the only two weaknesses I would say this card has is the fact that he does have the three-star weak foot and he has the medium, medium work rates and he can feel lazy at times when pushing forward. However, overall, I gotta give this guy a 9.25 out of 10. I think as far as 700,000 coins go, I can't think of many other attackers I'd rather have on this game. I mean, of course, 
I'd probably prefer using a Neymar. I'd probably prefer using a Ronaldo, somebody like that. But if you can't afford them and you can't afford the Storchkov card, I would say go for it, especially if you're using him at the striker position. I mean, he's going to be one of the best strikers you've used on this game, guaranteed. All right, guys, so that's going to be my 90 rated storage card review. Hopefully, you guys at home enjoyed it once again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, deuces.